So I kind of figured out I'm going to do this one. You can pick which one you want. But the, uh, you know, a series of guessing. I want you to go through the series of guessing, like putting in a light. I like to divide it into quarters. I'm going to draw lightly because I don't want my lines to dominate dominate my space. So then I can I can put my pencil up and I can see where the center line is, and this allows me to start making some more guesses. You know, and this is when I turn my pencil, it's pretty much square. I mean, the whole the whole thing's going to end up. This setup is pretty much square. So. I can hold my pencil, I can hold my pencil right in the middle, you know, and that'll show me halfway. I can show it this way, and that'll show me halfway, and I'll look with one eye. So then I can start taking my guesses. So I'm going to start with the object that's in the front, the cup. And this is where the cup's just over, straight down. The, um, so it's pretty much the simple shape is two ovals. That's what I can see here. Notice I'm, I'm holding my pencil like an artist. Sword fighting artist. You know, I don't want to choke my pencil till I'm, I don't want to really ever choke my pencil, but I want to start roughing in where I, I start seeing. So now I can use the cup for intersecting lines. I can see the brick behind it, which is the next object. And this is where you can see that the lines, these two lines on the bricks converge out here for our one point perspective to roughly the size. I figured out the height of the brick above the, the And I've thrown a glass jar in here. This will just add more, more interest. Glass jars are pretty much transparent and reflective. So that, um, so I'm not going to deal with my shadows just yet. I want to get my basic generic shapes in. So here's here's my uh, cup. The, um, the glass jar has a round round bottom to it. That's where I can start guessing. I'm using a charcoal pencil. Um, so the scale that I've made the scale that I've made my cup when I start putting everything next to it, the this jar, the um, you know. I, my glass bottles running off so I'm gonna let it so I'm not gonna deal with the reflections yet I can see literally see through it for the brick um, the shoe comes out to the end so now the shoe has this shape to it going to get weird inside the glass. So I can see this part of the, the back of the shoe, but then I can see the, the other part of the shoe peering out. So I'm going to let it. Working some laces. So I'm just rough, you see how I'm just roughing in the spaces where it's gonna go. So here's the brick. And I've built everything. So I started off with this brick. And from the brick, I can put the, the jar in there. I can set the, the shoe on top. So I'm, this is the same thing I do with everything. I do this with faces, with anything else. I'm do, I, I establish one part of it and then start building everything else in proportion to it. And it's a constant,
process of looking over the entire the entire piece. Um, it's a habit you develop by just doing it all the time. Um, I watched a YouTube today of a of a um, an artist working in New York now that draws. He wanted to be an illustrator, but he he sits in the street. He sits in a park and he draws. He draws portraits of people as they go by, and he makes up to like, he's had days where he's made $1,500 sitting and doing $25 portraits. But he, he's practiced to death. You know, he's practiced a lot. He just draws all the time. And it kind of, you know, and this is something that, you know, Drawing class isn't something you can cram for. It. The drawing class is like something that you you uh, you practice every day, and then you get better. But he would he got to where he could draw. He would do that continuous line drawing that I showed you in the beginning. He would just somebody would sit down in front of him, and then five to ten minutes he could draw an outline of them with their face, just like he almost traced a photograph. But he would you know just start here and just pull single lines that would describe the arm. Single lines that would, I'll have to play it. I, I kind of want to pull up YouTube and play it because he, he was kind of inspirational. I'm kind of curious how illustrators are surviving now. He went to Pratt um, in New York and he stayed in Pratt, but it, he's, he just talked about, he just started drawing all the time. He loved drawing, he draws all the time, he fills in uh, sketchbooks all the time. Okay. So I got my basic shape. I started with crossing it, building my front shape, and now I can go back and kind of figure out my shadows a little bit. Um, this is where I like to switch to vine. Um, and you can do the Um, either take each, like it probably is best to take each, at this point I want you to take, do a study of each piece, you know, not just the, like I was having you do an entire um, tone across the entire piece and then come back and erase it. But the, I'd like you to maybe this time try to take each piece and I'm gonna go back to the, the closest piece and build the shadows. Um, you can see the, the reflections. Like each place this little pewter copper mug sits, it's gonna have a new set of reflections because it's, it's a reflection of everything around it, but it's not transparent. So this will give you a time, give you a chance to do some tight studies of, of the piece. And I just, I want to, I want you to do this so that I can see where you are from the beginning. So I can kind of can compare the, uh, the beginning of the class when we started doing still lifes to where you are now with still lifes. Even though we've been drawing other subjects. Um, I found in my career that no matter what I drew, I, everything I, I every, Everything I learned how to draw carried over into other things that I started drawing. You know, this would be, and then for the final project where you're doing your self-portrait, if you you can work in, you know, a background that says, yeah, I've learned. Here's some other things I've learned from drawing class. You know, put in more more interest in your narrative that would show give a chance, I'm giving you a platform to show off. I want you to be imaginative, but I also want you to, you know, show off what you, other things you can do with your drawings. Um, so this is where I, you see how I'm putting down like, I'm blending in my shadows, I'm looking, coming back, in your building. Um, I remember my, my two boys, I remember my oldest boy learned how to read and then um, my, my youngest came along and he was like, 
I'm going to learn how to read today. And he's, he started, he just really put in a, a concerted effort to, to learn how to read in one day. And he was pretty disappointed by the end of the day because he, he wasn't much better at reading than he was at the beginning of the day. And it really, you know, drawing's the same way. It's, it's a, every day you learn a new technique, you, you get some, you get better at each individual thing. And then it, you, you get to where all of a sudden you're, you can draw. It's like you, you know, you don't really call, you, you don't really start off calling yourself an artist. It's like you work at it for years and years and then you'll turn around and go, oh yeah, I'm an artist now, okay. You know, my, all my life is studying, you know, doing it. It's, it's something that kind of grows up on you. Um, anyway, um, so you can see how I'm, I'm taking each section and slowly building it. I'm kind of, I'm just showing a different way of approaching the same thing without just like always saying, throw down a tone, erase, build. You know this this one I see I want to I'm curious if if um, if some of you will do better if you come and just approach each subject finish it and then move to the next but the main thing is to build up your outline and then come back and and start building each part and once you get most of the tone down um, switch over switch over to your white pastel or something like that to try to work up highlights or whatever you have to do to, to build up your lights and darks. Um, any questions? What kind of paper? Um, you, use your, your Strathmore or your newsprint. Um, newsprint, I don't know, who likes, can you tell much of a difference between the newsprint and the Strathmore and the fans here. Um, I like the, I mean, I like the newsprint because it has a little more tooth in it. So like when I'm using my pastels, it'll, it'll grab hold of it a little bit better. Also, it's, it has a little bit of a tint to it so that when I put down white, it'll, it'll, it'll show up um, a little better. Okay, so...